Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a little series in the introduction to proof writing, right? See, this is the introduction to better mathematics. For those of you that want to get into it but don't know where to start, what is, what is a proof, right? What are these problems? And I want to, I think this problem really helps illustrate some of the principles behind proof writing. So, a rook attacks every piece in the same row or column. How many rooks can we put on a four times four board such that no two attack one another. So here, I'd like you just follow along with me on this problem, you know, maybe pause for five minutes to try to solve it. And what is your idea? So how many can I put? Well, if I draw a four by four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, I see, okay, I can put a rook here, and then I cannot put any rooks here or here, so I could put one here, then I can't put anything in this row okay then it seems like you just like put them in each row and then you can say oh i can put four then you might say well four is the maximum well why so what have you done by constructing by showing you can put four you have shown that sh that the answer to how many rooks can you put such that no two attack each other on a four times four board that you can put at least four right and that's only one part of the problem. Now, the other part is proving that you can't put five. And I invite you to think about how could you prove that you cannot put five rooks on the board? Take five minutes and just think about how would you do that? And now the common misconception here is that people will look at this and say, well, if I add a rook anywhere, it will attack another rook. So it's impossible to put five. Now, that is true. If you add a rook anywhere else on the board, you're going to have it attacking another rook. However, who is to say that, a that there doesn't exist a construction of five rooks from that argument? There could be a construction of five rooks such that no four rooks are like this, right? What makes you say that? Well, if you put a rook, maybe you need to move this rook here, this here, this one here, this one here, and then you can put the fifth rook. Who is to say that it, that it has to be this specific configuration that you picked? That when you add another rook, oh, it's gone. So that is the difficulty that people have sometimes trouble grappling with. And then you might ask, okay, well, how do I prove that I can't put five? And the answer is here, you'd say, okay. Now, th this thinking go, there's two ways to formalize this thinking now, the, th the thinking that's coming up. One is to say, okay, let's say I could put five rooks. Now, there are no two rooks that attack each other. So there isn't a rook, there aren't two rooks in any row, right? Or two rooks in any column. So it means because there's one, two, three, four rows, if I had five rooks, I would need five rows and I don't have them. So there's at most four. A nicer way of stating that would be to say every row can have at most one rook because I have four rows, I can have at most four rooks. This construction shows that we can, what's it called? This construction shows we can place four rooks. So four is the answer, right? How many can we put in most? Now, to sort of illustrate this point further, I invite you to look at another problem. So instead of rook, if I put queen, now the answer, now the question is about a lot more interesting. So say here we didn't have the four rooks. But rather, we were looking to construct four queens. So let's say I put my first queen here. Then I can't put queens in this row, this row, there's diagonal. So I'll put another queen here. And now in this row, I can't put any other queen. And I can put the third queen here. Now, here's where this reasoning really takes hold. That you've shown that you can put at least three queens on the board such that no two attack each other. This is a construction. No two queens here attack each other. 
And if you went by the same logic from before, the initial logic for the rooks, if you add a queen anywhere on the board, you will have a queen that attacks that queen. You will have two queens attacking each other. So, that would imply, if this was correct reasoning, it would imply that three is the, the biggest answer. That you can put at most three queens such that no two attack each other. But the issue is, there is a construction such that four queens are on the board that know to attack each other. And what you need to do is instead of putting a queen here and here, you put a queen here, a queen here, a queen here, and a queen here. No two queens attack each other. And if you add another queen, they'll attack each other. But this is a construction that shows you can put four, which you didn't know previously. Right? Now you can put four. And you can use the same proof. Every row must have, is going to have at most one queen. We have four rows, so we're going to have at most four queens. This is a construction. Now, say instead of a four times four board, say it was a four times three board. Now, if you try to use the same sort of argument to say, now you can put how many queens? Well, you can put a one queen here, one queen here, one queen here. You can put three queens in this construction. And if you try to go now, okay, every row can have at most one queen, that means we can have at most four queens. Okay, you've shown that the biggest number of queens is at least three and at most four, but you haven't shown it's three. And then you need to change your argument and say, oh, but every column can have at most one queen. So when I place all the, so there's three columns, and ergo, I can have at most three queens. Now mind you, both the argument, there are at most four queens and at most three queens are correct arguments. The reasoning is correct. However, this one, the one on the rows, doesn't give you the answer. Because you cannot put four queens because of the columns. And the tricky part in mathematics and solving these problems is figuring out what the argument is. Are you looking at the rows, whereas you should be looking at the columns? And this is speaking in general sort of abstract terms, like are you looking at the correct thing to look at? This is the, a good introduction. And I would now ask you, how many instead of queens? A knight, how many knights, how many bishops? can you put? How many bishops can you put in a four times three board? How many knights can you put in a four times four board or four times three? These are questions that you should ask yourself and try to prove. And if you're done with four times three and four times four, try to go to eight times eight. How many bishops, knights, rooks, and even queens, perhaps, can you put on an eight times eight board, right? And I think when you try queens, you really, really get a sense that this argument, oh, if I just add another piece, it hold, everything breaks, doesn't work because you need to look at all the possible configurations. This is asking of all the possible configurations with five, with here, with four queens, of all the possible configurations. And there's 12, so there's 12 of these, four of these places, that's a lot of combinations of things. It's actually 55 combinations, if I'm not mistaken, but it's asking of all of those combinations, does a single one have these four queens such that no two attack each other? And what you're doing here is you're saying, I don't need to look at all of them. I've made an argument that says, it can be at most three. That if there are four, that there cannot be four such that no two attack each other. And if there are four, then two attack each other. That's the converse. So this finishes up our introduction to proof writing. And I'm going to do the bishops and knights next time. And as always, thanks for problem solving.